Hey everyone, this is Peter from Roland. I'm really excited to tell you about the MC707 Groovebox, Roland's latest in a long and illustrious lineage of Groovebox products dating back to 1996 with the MC303. The MC707 basically takes all of modern music production practices and combines it into a hardware unit that is fit for a studio, stage, coming up with ideas, collaborating. It's a really great open platform type of product that you can use for any genre of music. The MC707 has eight individual tracks that can sequence internal sounds or external MIDI devices. Right now, if I press select on an empty track, it'll ask me to choose one of four track types, which contain things like tone tracks for synth and melody sounds, drum tracks, and looper tracks for sampling incoming audio and having it loop. For this one, choose a tone track, and then you can see that the second track now is available for sequencing. So now I have two tracks enabled. One has a drum track on it, and then one has a tone track. Now the way that you are able to play sounds back is with clips. And the clips basically contain the note data that you can play back in different combinations, and it makes it a little bit more easy to flesh out ideas this way. So I'm gonna select the drum track, then find the sound that I wanna program. And I can get started really easily by simply programming some notes on the 16-step sequencer and pressing Start. Now if I want to start to program another sound, find that sound using the notepad here. Now I'm using this, the step sequencer, but if I want to real-time record something, I can press the record button and then the track is blinking, letting me know it's record enabled, and then I can play it back in real time, uh, completely unquantized, so I can get more natural grooves. But if I want to tighten that up, I can hold shift and hit the quantize button right here, and I can see that it gives me input quantize options or the ability to quantize that clip specifically. So I'll turn that up. And it gives me a percentage value so I can really dial in specifically what kind of feeling I want but now it's a lot more tightened up. So if I want to program some more drum notes, I could do that. Take this hi-hat that I programmed, for example, I'll add a few at the end, but if I press and hold these notes, I can see that I can change things like the start time, I can nudge it back and forth, but uh, more importantly, I can increase the mute percentage, which gives me a degree of probability. So I'll basically get a coin toss of, you know, 60% chance that this note will be muted, and it gives me more of a variety over time when I'm programming these types of things. Now that we've created a basic drum beat, I'm going to switch to the tone track that we created earlier, press sound, press preset, and navigate through the over 3,000 presets that the MC707 ships with. And there's different ways to uh, organize those to make navigating that easier, or you can always build your sounds from scratch. With the sound selected, I can see that the pads have taken on the shape of a keyboard, which means I could play chromatically cool is I can go to the chord button here and store chord memories for each of these uh, notes as well. So now instead of playing back just one note, I'm playing back chords. Change the octave. Now in this case, I'm going to play the drum pattern and program uh, a chord melody just like the, how I did the drums earlier. So now that we have something recorded, I can go into the tone edit window to start shaping the sound. So I'm gonna play it back. I can use the arrow keys to go to the uh, ADSR for the volume. Turn that up, go to the filter envelope, turn that up as well. Kind of elongate it a little bit. I can go to the filter section and amongst changing uh, you know, a few different filter types and different controls, I can change the cutoff and resonance. And the resonance up a little bit. And I can also navigate through a bunch of other things, like a dedicated EQ, a, a dedicated effect that I can put for that, uh, for that tone, and then also uh, mix-related settings like reverb sends, delay sends, panning, that type of thing. But if at any point I want to edit more options, all I have to do is hit Enter, and I can go to the deepest level of editing, where almost every facet of the sound can be adjusted from here. Aside from all the sounds that are in the MC707, you can import your own audio files to a tone track really easily. So I'm gonna select an empty track, select tone, 
And then instead of hitting preset, I'm going to hit WAV file. And it's going to look at the SD card and see if there are any audio files there that I can import. I could do real-time preview. And once I found the one that I want, I can hit import. Now it'll automatically create a tone track. And if I go into the tone edit window, it's just like picking out a built-in preset, only now my own custom audio is incorporated into the sound and I can do things like add effects to it. Go to the mix section, send it to the delays and reverbs. Or use the hands-on controls for some real-time uh, sound shaping. The MC707 can import or record audio in a few different ways. You saw earlier how I was able to import audio to a tone track. Now in this way, I can uh, import it to a track so that it'll loop back and time stretch with the MC707. So like before, I can preview the different audio files. And then if I find the one that I want, I can hit import. And let's play it back. With these loops, there's a bunch of different settings that I can change and adjust. Things like pitch. I can change the way that it time stretches, and I can also set it so that it's playing back in reverse. But for a performance, what's really cool is I can map any of these settings to a knob. So I have hands-on control. I don't need to dive into a menu to get at it. I can also set it up so that it'll do some recording of that knob movement, so I can treat it as some sort of drum fill. Now that I have some clips recorded, I can start to duplicate them and add variations to flesh out my track. I'll go to the drum clip that I recorded, copy it, paste it, and then I can duplicate it so that it is a longer phrase. I can go all the way up to eight measures, and then I can select some new drum sounds and create some, a little bit of variation in my pattern. Take this hand percussion here, put that on the sequence and play it back. So my drum pattern is longer. What I can do now is take that pad part, do the same thing, copy, paste. Only now, I'll go to the measure edit screen and start to change the direction of just that clip. So now it's playing in uh, reverse. I can do several different playback modes, even random, so it'll randomly access the different steps in the sequence. And I can start to make that sequence even smaller. And it's giving me a pretty drastic difference to the old uh, clip just by changing the clip settings. I'm not even changing the sound. So when I want to switch between uh, all the new clips that I created, I can hit clip under pad mode, and on the pads here, I can visually see which clips are currently playing and which uh, clips I can switch to. The MC707 has individual effects that you can put independently on each track, and you also have the ability to put effects on the master output as well. There's reverb and delay sends that you can use and adjust the settings of, uh, but there's also the creative effects which you could jump into and basically choose between dozens and dozens of effects that Roland's created. So in this case, I have the DJ FX Looper, which is my favorite, and you can use these knobs to change the controls in real time. Going beyond using the knobs to control the effects on the 707, you can use Scatter to add really dramatic effects to your track. The Scatter's been something that Roland's worked on for the last few years, and it's been implemented into the 707 in a way that's both really flexible, uh, but also really easy to perform with. By hitting Scatter, the pads change color, indicating that there is a different scatter setting attached to each pad. So if I play the sequence back, I can play these and hear different scatter effects every time I hit a different pad. And these could be super subtle or really aggressive. It really depends on how you design them. If I go into the scatter settings, I can start to build these scatter effects 
from scratch. And I can also chain them together onto its own sequencer. So just by holding the scatter button, I can chain these different effects together.